hi and welcome back to my channel my name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up. Welcome to June. So I'm back today with my makes for May and we are almost in the middle of June already and yeah I hope you're really enjoying the gorgeous sunshine that we're having in the UK at the minute if you live in the UK that is and wherever you are in the world thank you for joining me today and I hope the weather's good where you are. We are having some amazing weather at the moment. It's really settled down from the last time I spoke to you. May was awful from a weather perspective and yeah, it put me off sewing a lot of what I originally wanted to plan. But I've got loads and loads of things to show you. A few things that I said I was gonna sew and a few things that I, as usual, just decided on the spur of the moment. So let's get started. So I'll start with what I'm wearing. This is the Ravello dress by Sew Over It, which is part of their My Summer Wardrobe Dreaming, Summer Dreaming capsule collection, is it? I think it's one of their eBooks that they released a couple of years ago. I did make this dress last year and I really like it. There's a few different options with it. You can make it a sort of knee length dress, full on maxi midi length or you can even make it into like a little shirt as well and I made the full maxi length because I really like that length on me and this is that gorgeous Lady McElroy viscose that I showed you in my May plans vlog and uh, yeah I'll stand up to show you it's absolutely gorgeous I love it it's got little turn up cuffs which I did do differently to what the pattern instructions tell you to do because I don't like the finish on the pattern instructions and it's got a crossover bodice it's entirely bound with black satin bias binding it has a little um, elastic and button on the inside to attach the under layer to the side seam and then it ties in a little bow at the side and you'll see with the better pictures that I will insert for you that this has a lovely curved front hem at the bottom with the wrap over style and it sort of skims your body it's not a flared style it is a, a sort of straight more straight style but um, I really love it. It's got little darts in the back and a couple of little pleats in the front as well just to give you that bit of shaping and it's a really lovely dress. I think it's great for this time of year so I'm really really pleased with how this came out. I did have to size down from the version I made last year because obviously I'm a little bit smaller than I was last year and I'm really happy with it. There's definitely going to be loads more of these in my wardrobe. Um, it's fairly quick to sew up. Well, it is for me because I'm quite quick at sewing now, aren't I? But, and yeah, it's 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 a fabulous dress. Really like it. What more can I say? So this was the first thing that I made in May, and I have got a few other bits and pieces to show you. So let me grab you the next. Thing. So next up I showed you some lovely, I think it's called Scopolos jersey by Art Gallery Fabrics and I wanted to make this after seeing the lovely Shiona from Satisfaction make a version herself. Just a simple t-shirt dress which is great for you know sunny days like we're having at the moment. So this is it here. Now I can't remember the name of the pattern but it's a McCall's pattern that I've used before. It's got a really nice scoop neckline. Now, the only thing is this pattern does tell you to just turn under and stitch down the neckline, but I didn't want to do that because I don't like that finish. So I just drafted my own neckband. Essentially, I think I cut this at um, two inch width and then lengthwise, I think I did 85% of the neck line so once I'd stitched this together all I did was measure with a flexible tape measure around the circumference of the neckline and then created a neckband that was 85% of that so um, it worked out really really well to be fair so yeah I really like it this is a long dress it is midi length and it's got a centre back seam my pattern matching well there is none to be honest I didn't do any whatsoever um, but that's fine I did little cap sleeves as well I just think it's lovely it's a really lovely sunny dress and um, yeah again I will put some pictures in of this dress for you so you can see me wearing it but there's going to be more of these in my wardrobe because I really like it I have always shied away from horizontal stripes because historically I think 
you know, years ago, we were always sort of, as women told, you know, horizontal stripes make you look wider, etc. But, you know, I think we're all appreciating now that times have changed and we just wear what the hell we want to wear, don't we, if it makes us feel good. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. And, um, yeah, it's a great addition to my wardrobe. This was a really quick make. I think this probably took me about an hour. And I have cover stitched the hems around the armholes hopefully you can see that there and um also at the bottom as well the um the bottom hem that's that there is cover stitched as well it's a really lovely a lovely jersey this it's got really good recovery and um i just love the print i know they do this in like an orange and a purple print as well and I think I'd really like to get some of that and make another, but um, we shall see, we shall see. Uh, next up is the Peppermint Magazine Bad Undress. So this is a free pattern. I will link to it down below so you can go and have a look. It's a really nice, easy, sleeveless summer dress with uh, gathered tears on it. And this has turned out to be a little bit of a fail. So here it is and I think I showed you this fabric in my May plans. As you can see, because of the light behind me, is fairly sheer. So this dress I knew that I would need to wear with a slip underneath it. And I used self-bias binding to bind the armholes and the neckline as well. This fabric is a lovely, sort of very sheer cotton voile with little um, spots on it. As you can see, I picked this up from boys so it was really inexpensive i can't remember how much three or four pounds a meter something like that and um yeah it's got gathers into the waistband and then another tier at the bottom and um what else can i say it's fully french seamed inside which you know when you've got something as sheer as this you really need to make sure that the finish on the inside is really neat so that's what i did with this and um yeah i can't remember what size i made but the reason this has been a bit of a fail is because i didn't quite have enough fabric for the tiers at the width that they are so the bottom tier is more narrow than the pattern shows you this first panel from the waist is quite deep as you can see and the bottom tier is a little bit narrow and really i just think the proportions make it feel more nightdress because of the fabric style as well. So when I put this on, I feel like I'm wearing a nighty. Um, and I think to try and get away from that in this fabric, I needed to make sure that the bottom tier and this first skirt piece are actually the same depth. I think that would have helped with the less night gowny vibes, if that makes sense. So if I'm perfectly honest, I probably aren't gonna wear this. I think I will, I don't know, I might cut the top off. I will, as again, I'll show you the pictures, but it's not, the finished thing is not how I envis envisaged it, put it that way. So I think what I might do is take the top off and attach a waistband, it might even just be elastic, and to try and make a skirt out of it so I can salvage it somehow. Because I think with a different top and just wearing it as a skirt with a slip underneath, it will be fine, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm not done with the pattern because I really like the pattern and I think in a, a different fabric um, or a different patterned fabric should I say I think it will look fine I know Sam who is Frugalissima has recently made this and hers looks amazing it looks so good because she's used a pattern fabric and it just doesn't look night, like an eye dress but this I think in white I had this sort of vision of this ethereal you know something like um what's the name from lord of the rings the elf woman i can't even remember who kate blanchett plays galadriel that's it i had this vision that it would look all ethereal like galadriel and it really doesn't i look like a victorian lady woman going to bed in a nighty so yeah it's not really it's not really worked out but you know sometimes these things don't do they so I'm going to see if I can salvage it anyway, but um, yeah, that's a bit of a dud this month, I would say.
Moving on to something a little bit more successful. Back in my May Plans vlog, I showed you a couple of fabrics that I wanted to make the Jessica dress by Mimi G from. And I think I remember telling you that this pattern originally was for free, but now it does have a charge to it, but I don't think it's a lot. I'll link to it down below if you want to go check it out, but it's a really, really good pattern. It's very much like the Sienna dress, again from the Sew Over It My Capsule Wardrobe Summer Dreaming ebook. That's the right that's the right title. Gosh, I really should do my research, shouldn't I, before I film these vlogs. Anyway, it's very similar to that, except the Sew Over It version has shirred back to the bodice, which probably makes it easy, much easier for fitting. But I've made this pattern before and I really love it. What I love about this is the huge pockets on the front. They are patch pockets, but they're so big it just really adds so much to this pattern and again i just needed to adjust the pattern because i needed to go down a size because i needed the bodice to be a little bit more fitted again because i've lost weight since i last made it and i only got around to making one of these but i made it up in the beautiful fabric that i got from the lovely manjit at lucky fashions in dewsbury and this is it here and it's actually very similar to the fabric that Lisa Comfort uses on her dress in the Summer Dreaming ebook. So it's a panelled bodice with a sort of sweetheart neckline. These buttons I just purchased from eBay. I sort of took a bit of a punt and I think the colour match is perfect. It's a panelled front bodice. You've got an, a number of different panels and it's got a facing inside. It's panelled at the back. I don't know if you can see that very well to be fair. And then it comes into a gathered skirt with, as I say, these huge, huge pockets which are really deep. The buttons go all the way down the front. And then the thing I loved about this fabric was playing around with the design of the fabric so that I could have the cutwork bit as the hem at the bottom. And I'm really, really pleased with how that's come out. It's worked really, really well. So again, I'll put some pictures in of me wearing this to show you how it looks. I prefer the fit of this to the the one that I made before because it's just a lot more fitted on the bodice now and um, yeah I really like it I think it's gorgeous so I was going to make another one of these from some more embroidered cotton that I think I got from Lamazi but I just didn't get around to it um, but I'm still planning on having a go at that but yeah this fabric's beautiful really lovely I don't know if Manjit has any more of this now the only thing that I had to be careful of was with the button band, you are supposed to interface it and that, it didn't occur to me that because of the cutwork bit at the bottom, that if you interface the button band, you obviously can see the interfacing through. So yeah, I made a bit of an error with that. So I ended up interfacing all the button stand and then having to try and remove it there is just a little bit that you can probably just see just in the seam allowance there but you know it's um it's fine nobody's gonna be looking at my seams in that close detail I don't think so I think it will be okay yeah that's just one thing to bear in mind if you're using a fabric that has cutouts like this you know the broderie on glaze fabrics or the eyelet fabrics you know if you do have to interface sections that the interfacing will show through because I've never seen hot pink interfacing put it that way so yeah anyway love this one and uh, yeah this is going to get lots of wear in the current heat of the summer the next dress that I have to show you is a couple of Tilly and the Buttons patterns and the first one is the Lyra dress which is Tilly's latest release and yeah there's quite a lot of them out there at the minute so I fell in love with this gorgeous leopard print that the lovely Manjit had and as soon as I saw it I just had this vision of a Lyra in leopard print so here it is here is my Lyra now this is more like a Georgette crepe fabric it's not a pure Georgette because it's a bit heavier but it's it's really really lovely so the Lyra is a button-up bodice with a full collar and collar stand on it has gathers into the waist and then it's got like a tear at the bottom as well now it also has a belt with it but 
the pattern instructions just tell you to create a belt and just tie it around your waist but I created little thread thread chains on mine I don't know if you can see that there which are really simple to do so I just created some thread chains for for the belt and yeah the the issue with this pattern that I think a few people have struggled with is around the collar and collar stand now she does have you cut the under collar and under collar stand on the bias which I did do that but to be honest I don't think you need to do that I think you know most of the I've never come across a pattern before that has you um, do that and I, I suppose I can understand that it, you know in some fabrics it might make it easier for fitting but to be honest I don't, I don't think it was necessary and I probably wouldn't do it again especially if I was struggling with you know not having enough fabric to get the pattern pieces out of because this fabric is like quite lightweight I interfaced both collar sections and both under collar sections to give me a bit more structure for the collar and that worked really well the only issue i think that is in the instructions with this dress is once you've constructed the collar they tell you to attach it to the bodice right sides together which is actually wrong it should be the under collar and collar stand that you attach to the right side of the bodice and i did it as the pattern instructions told me to but that means then that the under collar becomes the bit that falls back that you can see and that has created a bit of an issue because you obviously have to roll the under collar under a little bit when you're pressing so that it um the seam doesn't show and because it's on the wrong way round for me obviously you can see the edge of the under collar because this is actually what it should be the under collar and it's not it's now the outer collar i hope that really makes sense because it's you know it's a little bit waffly isn't it but anyway i think you get the idea so yeah i'd already stitched it all down when i realized what i'd done and i read the instructions again and she definitely tells you to attach it right sides together but you actually should be attaching the under collar which is actually the wrong side isn't it to the bodice does that make sense anyway i can get away with it in this print but obviously dependent on the fabric choice that you've used you wouldn't get away with it um so that was a bit annoying i'll be honest but otherwise it's a nice dress i like it i think i made a size three top and a four bottom it is very very loose fitting and it's designed to be loose fitting but there was a bit too much ease in it than i particularly liked it's you know not the weather for wearing this at the minute because it's really quite warm but um it was when i made it in may let's be honest it was cold and um i think this is something that will easily be wearable in spring autumn and winter with tights and boots so i'm really happy with it would i make it again i probably would to be fair i do like this style of dress um the buttons that are on here probably don't really go i was hunting around in my button stash because this really was meant to be a wearable toile and i didn't want to be buying new buttons so i had to choose something out of my button stash that more or less went with the the fabric and i ended up choosing these ones which are actually if you look at the light they're sort of like an, a blue a bluey color but I think they're okay i think them you know they're fine as i say it's a wearable to well this fabric was not expensive so um yeah so that's the last dress that i've got to show you next up the lovely carrie who is so pretty kitty had made a fantastic bertha cardigan by tilly and the button so we're still on the tilly theme and i really liked that pattern and i've wanted to make a cardi for a while but I'm really quite particular about fabrics that I like my cardigans made out of and it's just my personal choice but I'm not really into using sweatshirt fabrics to make jersey to make jersey cardigans I prefer the sort of knitted look um, that you get from wool that kind of thing and there aren't many fabrics that I can find that I would like to make cardigans out of so it's not something that I've really experimented with before i did a few years ago make a few cardigans actually i made like the long maxi ones i think one was by named is it the esme um or is that a grain line one i can't remember but there's but there's a couple of those that i've tried and i think there was one by 
um, Muse patterns as well that I tried and they didn't really work out because I just didn't like the seam finishing around, you know, when you attach the bands to the main bodice and you end up having to overlock them and I just find those overlocked seams in that kind of fabric really bulky and irritating. So I've tended not to bother making cardigans at all out of jersey because it's just my personal preference that I prefer the knitted look. However, when I saw Carrie's version of the Bertha, I knew that I had that pattern um, because I've got that book, the stretch book by Tilly. I think it's the stretch book or is it the Make It Simple? It might be the Make It Simple one. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it and have a go because I knew that I'd got this fabric in my stash, which is actually from Colville. So it wasn't an expensive fabric and it's got like a, it's got a texture to it. So it's not just your normal sweatshirt, French terry type jersey. It's got a bit of a texture to it, which is the kind of thing that I like. And I'd seen some really, really beautiful Mind the Maker, I think it's Mind the Maker um, knit that Lamazzi was selling. And it's very expensive, that stuff. I think it was about 16, 17 pounds um, for half a meter, I think, something like that. It was really expensive. And I thought, well, you know what? If I use the fabric that I got from Colville to twirl the Bertha first, if I like it, then I can, you know, use that fabric to make one. And that's exactly what I've done. So here she is. Here is my Bertha cardigan. And this knit, as I say, is like a waffle texture. I don't know if you can really see that. Hopefully you can. But it's, it's, it's actually really, really lovely. And I can't remember what size I made of this, but this is a super, super quick make, even from cutting it out, well, tracing off the pattern, cutting it out and getting this sewn up on my overlocker. The thing I don't like, as I say, is all these overlocked seams on the inside. And I don't mind using my overlocker, but I just find overlocked seams on the inside of, of cardigans, because there's so many of them because of all the extra components, they just tend to add bulk and, yeah, I'm, I'm just a bit funny about things like that. But anyway, these have got like cuffs on and it's a bit sort of cocoon shaped, I guess. It's a raglan cardigan if you've not, not seen this before. The only thing I don't like about it is this front piece here, there seems to be, and I don't know whether it's just me that has, has traced this off incorrectly. I don't think I have, but there seems to be like a little poofy bit that just comes out just there at the front um if any of you have made this can you just let me know in the comments if you've had this as well i mean you can see it there look it's like a little bit of a a poofy thing i'm going to put it on to show you i did have to lengthen this by a lot to be honest i lengthened the sleeves and i lengthened the bodice as well oh no actually i didn't lengthen the bodice because i wanted this to be cropped it's not designed as a cropped cardigan it's designed to be um quite loose fitting slouchy but I wanted it to be a little bit more fitted and to be a cropped length so because I just wanted it to end at my waist so but can you see there I've got like this little bit here and I think that's wrong but I like the length of it I mean now it fits me just on my right on my high hip and as I say I didn't add any length to this at all but I think it's quite nice the sleeve length I really like these deep cuffs I think they look lovely in fact I think I followed Carrie's advice with this because when Carrie made hers the cuffs themselves are just rectangles and what she found with hers was that they where it fits around the wrist it actually stood away from the wrist so she said that next time she was going to make it she was going to taper the cuff pieces to um, taper them in a bit so that they hooked a bit more around the, the wrist so that's exactly what I did all I did I mean you can just probably see there from from the angle of the the cuff there that all I did was I created sort of like a, a bow shape like that so that when it was sewn together the fold bit was the narrow part where it, it fit around my, ri my wrist and I just based it on the angle of the sleeve sleeve portion I'm really sorry I'm gonna have to take this off because it's so warm yeah does that make sense but anyway it it worked really well and I I yeah I just created my own my own cuff piece from the piece for the pattern so that it's not 
it's not square and doesn't stand away from my wrist so that's worked really well but yeah i really like this fabric it's lovely and i didn't have a white or cream cardigan anyway and it's i've been looking for a nice one for a while that i could buy ready to wear but i had this pattern i'd seen carries and i thought you know what i'm just going to make it up in this fabric and see what it turns out like and i'm really pleased with it this was a super quick make again the other thing that i don't like is how when you finish the seams and i know you don't have to finish seams on jersey fabrics because they generally don't fray but i just think in a cardigan you're going to see all the inside when it flaps about especially a cardigan like this that you don't fasten and i tend to not fasten cardigans anyway i tend to just have them as an extra layer but leave them unfastened so you know they're gonna sort of flop about a bit and i just think in a cardigan the seams need to try and look as neat as possible inside but because of the way you construct the front band and the bottom you end up with like a little bit of a bulky bit of overlocking that you know is is difficult to hide so i ended up having to just put a couple of stitches in to try and make it you know so that you can't see it from the front but it's those kinds of things that i find with cardigan patterns for sewing that just don't give me that perfect finish that i'm after yeah so anyway but otherwise I'm, I'm quite pleased with it i do like it i'm not sure yet whether i'm going to make this out of the mind the maker fabric and it's because of this bit here because that is really irritating me again and i need to just have a relook at that pattern to see if it's something i've done um which it could well be so anyway but otherwise you know for a little toile and a little cardigan that i can just throw on over a dress like this when the weather dictates it's 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 fine it's great okay moving on i mentioned that i wanted to make the paper theory olia shirt in may and i bought some white linen that i just got from ebay it wasn't expensive and yeah i've wanted a white linen shirt for quite a long time because i think it's one of those classic pieces that you'll just wear all the time in your wardrobe especially at this time of year on maybe those cooler days um that aren't quite so hot as it is at the minute i really liked the all your shirt pattern because again it's different the seaming details are different now i did mention that i wasn't going to add the pockets i ended up adding the pockets and this actually was made very early on in may but it's been sat on my chair in my sewing room for the last few weeks because i haven't been able to find the right buttons to finish this shirt off and i i ended up initially buying just some basic matte white buttons plastic buttons with no details on at all because i thought then they would blend in i bought them from ebay when they came i didn't like them it's well it's not that i didn't like them i didn't want them on this shirt because this shirt has turned out so well i'm so pleased with it and I just thought they're just not going to look right on it at all. Even though they're white and blend in, I thought I just want something a little bit different. So next up, I looked at the Pigeon Wishes buttons and I ordered two sets of these ones. I just thought they're a really nice contrast and they're going to look so nice on this shirt and just give it that more sort of expensive look, I guess. And they came and they are beautiful buttons, but they're far too big. So these are the buttons here. But these are an inch buttons, which are just too big to put on the shirt. So as much as I love those with the white, I think, you know, I think they would look gorgeous. They're just too big for shirt buttons. So I'll end up using those on something else. And then I discovered Textile Garden, which is actually Tamlin from Sewn on the Time that's put me onto them because I know that she's bought a lot of buttons from them. So I had a look at their website and oh boy they've got some beautiful buttons on there in fact I've, i think i've made three three orders already so i found these buttons the ones i actually wanted they didn't have in stock anymore but they've got these ones which are a shell and they're sort of like a um they're not going to come up really really well on here but they have like a a glazed effect on them so they're so pretty and i just think they finish off this shirt oh let me come back into focus excuse piper barking in the background i don't know what he's barking at but i thought these would work really well and just finish this shirt off beautifully so here she is here is my linen olia shirt so this is a gorgeous shirt it's got a full collar and collar stand which were easy to construct the pockets, they are straightforward, I would say. I mean, as I say, the seaming detail, detail on this is really unique because 
the pattern piece is a really strange pattern shape it's quite like origami because this seam here goes all the way around and over and the back seam of the back yoke the seam actually comes down here and into the sleeve it's really really difficult to describe how it works but it's it's really really lovely so i would say if you have not made a shirt before don't choose this pattern if you're relatively inexperienced i think you know you will find this pattern quite difficult to understand the instructions are really good and i absolutely adore how this has worked out but the pockets are really seamless and it's got like a little pleat detail at the back of the yoke hopefully you can see that and the placket instructions for doing the placket on the cuff is absolute genius it really is it's the best instructions i've ever seen it's a, a different construction to any placket i've ever done before because normally what you do is you cut down and open it up and stitch the placket onto the um the bit you've cut if that makes sense and you don't do that with this it's totally different um but it gives you a really really neat finish like that and um yeah it's really lovely really really good so i'm really impressed with this pattern and i love my new shirt i've put one of the kylie and the machine labels in there i'm not going to read it out because youtube will um tell me off if i do um and um it's got a slightly sort of curved hem on it which is really flattering full button stand and button band down the front and as i say i think those buttons that I finally decided on are really, really pretty. So overall, super happy with it. It's a classic. I will get loads of use out of this and I would highly recommend this pattern if you just want a shirt pattern that's something a little bit different. I think I'd mentioned originally that I was gonna look at doing maybe a concealed placket down the front and I think if I hadn't have found these buttons, I possibly would have looked at that. Um, and I still think it would be nice to do that, to just give it that totally clean finish. I think that would be a nice little um, expansion pack that they could do. But, you know, it's, it's a great shirt. I'm really, really pleased with it. Moving on. I'm not sure if this pattern was actually in my plans, but I decided to make it anyway. And it is the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo dress or tunic so i decided to go for the tunic version and the reason i wanted to make this pattern was because i really was drawn to the exposed little frill that is round the waist and the sleeves i really liked the sleeves um and i thought i'd have a go at it and see what i thought so here it is finished and this fabric i think in one of my stitched up vlogs that I my weekend of vlogs where I talked about this pattern I think I mentioned that I made this in in a viscose that I got from Fabric Godmother but this is actually I don't think this is viscose or if it is it's got some tensile in it definitely it's a lot more structured there's a lot more weight to it than a, than a than normal viscose or the, or the viscoses that I've used before anyway so I am really pleased with it I'm really happy how it's come out obviously as I say I've just made the tunic version I did lengthen the waist by an inch and I think I lengthened the sleeves by half an inch as well and I'm not completely happy with the exposed frill and the reason for that was the way the instructions told you to do it what they told you to do was to fold over the top of the skirt piece first overlock it fold it over and stitch it then run gathering stitches through and then attach it to the bodice and stitch again but what i found when i did that was that i ended up with two rows of stitching on this exposed bit and it just looked messy so i ended up having to unpick it all and what i did was i folded over the seam allowance at the top and i just put gathering stitches in well, I pressed it and then put gathering stitches in. I didn't actually st stitch it at that point. Then I attached it and did the stitching. And then once I took the gathering stitches out, there was just one row of stitching that you can see. And that worked much better. So I don't know why she tells you to do that, to be honest, because it's enough just to press it over, put the gathering in and then attach it. So yeah, that was the only issue I found. And I think the only other issue I found, which I find with a lot of Tilly's patterns, to be perfectly honest, is that her facings are always really narrow. And no matter how much 
clipping into the curves and under stitching you do they still and even you know stitching down at the seams at the, on the shoulder they still flip out an awful lot and this one flips out as well and the other issue i've got with this pattern is that the shoulder seams are not on the shoulder and even when i hang this on the hanger if you look you can see the shoulder seams how this dress is hanging the shoulder seam here is at the back this is the back of bodice here so it's not it's not right now i initially when i talked about this in one of my vlogs the other week i initially thought that it maybe was me that had sewn it wrong or i don't know but a few people in the comments have mentioned the same thing i never have to do a forward shoulder adjustment on patterns i've never had to do it before so you know it's not a body quirk that i've got should shall we say so i think it is this pattern but yeah i did wonder whether it was just me that had that issue but there's been an, you know i know there was a number of people who made that that comment do i still like it yes i do um but i would have to tweak it definitely so i'd have to you know um just mess about with that a little bit more i think but otherwise you know what can i say it's a nice it's a nice top i do like the exposed frill but as, as i say i will have to just play about with that in future at least with this fabric choice it you know those little issues don't really show up so much but um i do like it with leggings it looks great so and i'll probably will make it again but as i say i'm just gonna have to probably add on about an inch to the the shoulder seam at the back bodice and take off a tiny bit on the front bodice just and play about with that just to make that fit either that or just make a completely different use a completely different bodice because it is a standard bodice um with darts bus darts in to be fair so yeah it's it's yeah it's i would say it's successful but there are a few issues with that pattern that i will need to address if and when i make it again right we're getting there i have got one two three four five more things to show you so next up is the audrey top by sew over it and i love this pattern i absolutely love it so this is the first time i have made this and i just made it exactly as the instructions the only thing i did again was to add length to the pattern pieces but otherwise i just made it up as the instructions and here it is so i've used this gorgeous ponty it's a navy and white ponty that i got from i think originally i got this from stitchy b and it's beautiful it's i've done the one with the little um necktie not the bow just the necktie and the deep neck band and it's absolutely fine it's a raglan sleeve top i've done the three quarter length sleeves it's really lovely now the the tie is on the wrong side to the pattern because i think it's just the way i cut my pattern pieces out i did it with the facing side of the with the, yeah the right side of the fabric facing up in and i think i should have cut them with it facing down but it doesn't matter does it what side you have the tie on to be fair but yeah i love it i mean the neck band lays flat i think i'm sure somebody mentioned to me that andrea from beyond the pink door had a problem with the neck band and getting it to lay flat and had to make some adjustments to it but i didn't have any issue with this it just seemed to work fine so i don't know but um yeah it's it it was fine i just as i say i cut it out as per the pattern and it fits me fine but i've never seemed to have any issues with sew over it patterns anyway they always just seem to fit me straight out of the packet apart from adding the length you know which i do for every pattern so i used my cover stitch to do the top stitching around the neckline and to be honest i'm not completely happy with that because there is a fair bit of bulk at some of these seams and my cover stitch does not like bulk look at the state of that it's led me to make a bit of a decision i'm just sidetracking a little bit here because i've had my bernina Burnett b42 fun lock cover stitch for about three years now and i've only used it well i don't use it a lot because i come out in a cold sweat i'll be honest because it's the, uh, the feed dogs are quite sharp so fabric when you're trying to feed fabric underneath to start it catches on the feed dogs all the time as i've just shown you it doesn't like going over bulky seams it tends to chew and get stuck underneath it's been quite problematic i'll be honest so i decided to upgrade and this is totally judy's fault 
this is really is a case of Judy made me do it. So I have a baby lock imagine overlocker and um, Judy has this, which is the baby lock cover stitch. And I had a little go on hers and it's just amazing. It's It was like when I upgraded from my brother 1034D overlocker to the baby lock. It, it was like the poles apart. And I have to say the Bernina cover stitch compared to this are poles apart. This is an absolute dream. I'm not going to talk anymore about the cover stitch machine for now. It only came yesterday so I'm still having a little play with it and it's still very new but I am going to do a separate vlog on that and show you how it works and yeah it's just amazing. So I'm going to be selling my B42. There's nothing wrong with it. As I say it's probably user error more than anything. I just can't get on with it. I don't like it. Um, so I'm going to get rid of get rid of it now I've got this. So um, this was not sewn on that by the way because obviously this was made a few weeks ago. I made this actually one morning while Bronte was getting ready when Bronte was here. It took me about an hour so um, yeah I got this together then. So I love it, it's gorgeous, it's exactly what I wanted and it looks great with my next make which is a pair of shorts. So I made these which are the Sweet Shorts by Pattern Runway. Now there is a bit of a disclaimer I'm going to say here. These are my favourite shorts pattern. I absolutely love them, but they are not very size inclusive. Pattern Runway are actually a quite old pattern company now. Um, they're an indie pattern company, but they don't, I don't think she's doing it anymore because I think when I first started sewing about seven years ago, it was one of the indie pattern companies that I found at the time and she's not released anything for years so I don't think she's doing it anymore but I love this pattern and but at the time the pattern size range was very limited it's an Australian I think it's an Australian pattern company but yeah they, they don't go up very high at all but fortunately I do fit into their size range and thankfully you know pattern companies are listening to people a little bit more now and they are expanding their size ranges and bringing out new patterns catering for a much more inclusive size range which is really good really good but you know this pattern unfortunately isn't but I'm going to show you them anyway because I do love these shorts so these are them here and what I love about these shorts is the features of them again they've got this really lovely little sort of scalloped hem at the front they've got pockets which are nice little slanted pockets and the pockets have um you know some really nice details inside as well they've got seamed pockets inside nice curved waistband and welt pockets at the back as well which are always interesting to create aren't they i am not very good at welt pockets i always struggle with them but to do these i actually found a tutorial from the lovely diane dazeel i will link to it down below because it's amazing and her instructions on how to create welt pockets are so good and so easy to follow so i didn't use the instructions in this pattern because it's quite confusing i'll be honest and i used hers to create the welt pockets and it worked really well these are probably the best welt pockets i've ever made and they aren't that good um but you know i'm i'm quite happy with those to be fair they've got an invisible zip at the side and i made a bit of an error with this pair because i i've made these three or four times now and the zip is supposed to go all the way up to the top of the waistband and I put the waistband on before, no, I put the zip in before I put attach the waistband and you're not supposed to do it that way. So I ended up with the zip just going to the top of the shorts and not including the waistband. So what I did was I just put a couple of white snaps on instead um, and it, it works, it works absolutely fine. So again, you know, my little Audrey top with these shorts they look fab. I'll put picture in here and you can have a look. So I'm really, really pleased with these. And again, I've got some white linen trousers that this top will look great with. Love these shorts. Um, the hems, I have just used my blind stitch, which I do on all my hems where I don't want the, the seam to show rather than hand stitching because I hate hand stitching. Well, I don't. I don't hate hand stitching, but I hate hand stitching hems. Um, but I just, yeah, did a blind stitch on these. And yes, I've used light grey overlocking thread. I couldn't be bothered to change it. Hey ho. Right, so next up, I delved back into active wear 
in May as well and I love Wattle and Slate. I will leave a link to them down below. They sell custom print fabrics and they do them in rounds every so often and I've got a few of their fabrics now and this fabric came and as soon as it came I wanted to get it sewn up. So I have made the Lift Leggings which is a new release by Green Style Creations and they are awesome. So here they are. So this is the gorgeous Starlines Athleisure fabric from Wattle and Slate and these are a seamless legging so there's no side seams at all there's just the seam down the sort of centre of the leg. I've used just some white lycra for the waistband and then at the back they have like a shaped curve here and then they have ruching so it's supposed to lift your bum. They don't lift my bum. My bum is too too far gone now in years and um yeah everything else to be lifted to be perfectly honest but you know they you know it's a nice touch and what i wanted really was a legging with no um no seams on because it's easier for pattern matching i think my pattern matching is quite good with these as well look and also just with no interruptions as well no extra paneling or anything like that i haven't even hemmed the bottom of these because to be honest it, i use these for running in it's not that important now this waistband is really small because i did go down a size and the reason for that is because i use these for running and i need to have them really tight around my waist so that they don't move when i'm running yeah the problem with a lot of leggings and leggings patterns is that if you make them make them so that they just sort of hug you rather than really fit they end up you know you can't run in them because they just end up riding down all the time these just don't move because they've got a layer of invisible elastic just around the top and I made them just I tapered the waist in just an extra size small so they are fairly small they're great I have run in these and they're amazing absolutely amazing and to go with these using my scraps I also made this which is here we go so this is the power sports bra again by green style creations and it's the first time I've made this pattern. I've had this pattern in my stash for ages. I will put some better pictures in because with the best will in the world, I'm not going to try this on and stick pictures of me all over the internet wearing a little sports bra because this is quite skimpy. What's interesting about this is when you're measuring yourself to make this pattern because the measurements, you don't go by your normal bra size. Even if you normally sort of measure yourself for a normal bra, it will not match the same sizes that you need in this and that's because this is a sports bra so it needs to fit differently to a normal bra the whole point of a sports bra is to really hold you tight so that when you're you know exercising things don't move so i actually measured up my normal bra size is a 36b and um I measured up as a 32D for this, which was really interesting. I've never been a D cup unless I was pregnant. Um, but anyway, here is the little bra and it is gorgeous. It's, you know, I've used white lycra and the Starlines lycra for the cups. And at the back, if I just turn it round, I'll show you the, the straps are sort of crisscrossed at the back like that, which looks really nice. There are various options for this bra and i know in the, the green style i've got a facebook group and there are loads of hacks that people have done with the style of this bra it's great um it's lined with power mesh as well so it just gives that extra compression and that extra support and then i've used quite wide elastic at the bottom so again i have run in this bra now green style also do the embrace sports bra which is for ladies who have a much larger chest than me um this does go up to a larger chest but if you are a runner you probably would want um the embrace bra because it would offer much more support when you're running with the impact um but you know i'm not very well endowed shall we say and this holds me absolutely fine for running and i don't move so i'm absolutely delighted with it i really am and um it looks brilliant and yeah i'm amazed i think what's put me off this sports bra before is that i don't do any other exercise apart from running and hiking as well i do walking and so you know 
a sort of exercise that gets you sweaty running is the only exercise i do and i think i was always worried that this would not be supportive enough for running because you do need you know that high impact compression really for running and um, but it is it's great so yeah really really happy with those the final thing i'm really sorry if this if you've got this far you've done amazing because this vlog must must be going on for forever i'm really gonna have to cut down how much i make can't i each month and then i don't have you sort of holding you to my vlogs for like ever but anyway my, the final thing i made was i think on the very last day or the second to last day of may and that was the miri jumpsuit by papercut patterns which is here so this is um a jumpsuit which has it's quite a strange front pattern piece it's got these two sort of elongated straps that come right out of the front bodice piece that you sort of cross over and tie and um, it has a center front seam down the front which is where it's going to be if it's center front isn't it and um, invisible zip in the back which i have made a bit of a bodge job of that but i'll come to that in a little while and it's got wide legs and i added an inch to the waist but i added nothing to the legs because i wanted the legs to be cropped length rather than full length and that worked out really 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 worked really well actually i love this jumpsuit i love how it came out this is a gorgeous sort of olive green linen that i got again from ebay i think it was 12 12.95 a meter this is a linen cotton but it, it really is nice actually it's really nice quality and the only issues i had with this really was that the bodice was too big when i made this up i made this according to my my body measurement size you know bearing in mind what the finished measurements said but i still found it too big so i ended up having to take in an inch off each side seam and then I, I took out another inch from the center front seam as well tapering to nothing at the waist and it fits me much better now. So I'm really happy with it now. I just, I will definitely make it again. The instructions are fab. I do love paper cut patterns. Yeah, the instructions. I mentioned this in one of my vlogs the other week when I made this. Oh, it does have side seam pockets as well. Is about, because it's got a facing inside and it's like an all in one facing. There was a few issues with, with the instructions on this because it didn't tell you when you attach the facing to the bodice it didn't tell you to attach the neckline at all anywhere in the instructions it didn't tell you to clip into the curves it didn't tell you to understitch you know if you're quite inexperienced in so in garment sewing and you follow those instructions to the t then you're going to miss you're going to miss those little bits i think and you're going to get tie yourself in a few knots i think and I think, I mean, I know some people can say, well, you know, it, this is classed as an intermediate pattern, so really they they don't need to put those kinds of things in because they, you could argue that they would imagine that you would already recognise that you would need to clip into the curves and understitch in certain areas without them having to tell you to do that. And I, I, I totally accept that as well. I think, but it, it's, I think it's a glaring error missing out to stitch the neckline to the facing, but that's just me. So, but apart from that, I do love them and I will definitely make it again because it's a really nice pattern and yeah, that's that really. So that's my makes for me, which is not bad, is it? Considering I work full time and don't have a lot of time off and I don't tend to sew during the week because I'm working and on an evening, I just really can't face it. So I just want to chill out, walk my dog, go for a run maybe and chill out really. That's my makes for me. So I hope you've enjoyed having a look at what I've been up to and I will do my plans for June, even though we're nearly halfway through. I'm going to do that separately. I'm going to tell you all about this little this little beauty in a separate vlog as well and uh yeah i hope you'll join me for those as and when i get around to it so stay safe hope you're all well look after yourselves and i'll speak to you all really soon take care bye <laughs>